Guys, this one's really tough to admit, and I'm not clickbaiting you. This is a real opinion that I've come to, and I will stand by it until it can be dethroned. I think this is the best naked motorcycle on the market. I said it when I first test rode this thing and I did my first ride and impression of it back when we got it in August, and I still think that. So in today's video, I'm gonna try to convince you as to why I think this Ducati Street Fighter V4S is so special and is my number one pick for the best naked motorcycle you can buy on the road today. So what makes it so special? There's so many things that make this bike special. There's the engine, there's the handling, there's the electronic suspension, there's the fancy paint scheme, it's the little Ducati logo. But if I may be honest, I think one of the most special things about this bike is it's a giveaway motorcycle. Today's actually the very last day you have to get entered to win this thing. So head over to shop.yamanube.co, pick out anything you want. You're gonna get 10X entries to win this Ducati Street Fighter V4S. If you've ever had the dream of owning a Ducati, well, make it a reality by having this one show up at your doorstep and winning it. Don't miss out, it's gonna be great. But let's get into that thing I mentioned first, the engine, because that really is the star of the show on this motorcycle. This engine is simply derived from the gods, and motorcycles, obviously as the name implies, are very related to the motors that are in them. And this one is really, really special. I've never ridden anything quite like this Street Fighter V4S. It's an 1103 cc V4 with the desmodromic valves, revving out to almost 15,000 RPM, making 208 horsepower and 90 foot-pounds of torque. Now, it's not to say that peak power and top-end horsepower are the be-all, end-all, but this is a really exciting package that is very unrivaled in the world of motorcycling because this thing is based on a Panigale V4 Superbike. And when I say based on a Panigale V4 Superbike, I mean that it basically is a Panigale V4 Superbike. And what's better than a Superbike with handlebars? Not much in my opinion. So this is the same frame as the Panigale V4 Superbike and the same engine from the V4S. Now, you can't get the V4R engine in the Street Fighter. We may see that someday, although I highly doubt it. This engine makes its power in such an interesting way and it features such an exotic soundtrack while it's doing it too. This V4 has such an interesting way of making power. It's very dissimilar to other V4s on the market. And I think it's really special for that reason. Now, Panigale V4 frame, Panigale V4 engine must be pretty good on track, right? <laughs> you have no idea. So as many of you know, I am a pretty diehard track rat. I'm a CMRA club racer. I've been doing track days for years. And so whenever I review or enjoy a motorcycle, typically it's pretty good on track. I was honestly not prepared for how good this bike was on track. I should have expected more out of it, honestly. I set the bar kind of low because I'm like, oh, it's a naked bike. They're usually a little awkward and compromised on track. Um, and it's true, the ergonomics of this aren't exactly perfect for track riding, but I was blown away at how good it was, how you could spin lap after lap, how confidence inspiring it was. The electronics work amazingly. Uh, you feel like a superhero. You put this thing into race mode and I actually have a full dedicated track review and impressions of this thing which you guys should definitely go and check out if you want the full detailed impressions. But suffice it to say, you put it in race mode, you smash the gas, the whole thing figures it out for you. Um, you can just rail the brakes into corners. I never felt like I even got close to touching ABS with this bike. And I was really braking as deep as I dared break with a bike that cost almost $30,000. And the auto blipper works incredibly too. You rail the bike with the brakes, grab up on the auto blipper, or rather on this bike because it's standard shift to be grab on the auto blipper. And it just feels so good. I was blown away at how amazing this bike did on track. And I would happily own this as a track bike, which is silly to say, because it's so good on the street too, which is my next point. So normally when a bike is really good on track, it usually kind of sucks on street. The other day I had to blow the cobwebs off of my race bike and I took it up and down the block here and I realized just how ridiculous it would be to have a race oriented bike on the street. Somehow, some way, Ducati has figured out a way to engineer this bike so that it is so usable on the street. 
They've done some amazing wizardry to both the throttle response and the engine response so that low down in the revs and kind of around town, the thing is happy to poodle along and putt-butt down the road to your favorite bar or restaurant or grocery store, or whatever you need to do. And that is an incredible trick that Ducati has played. The fact that this thing gets up to 15,000 RPM and feels like a race bike on track, and yet you can take it on the street and it feels so nice to ride. Normally leader bikes and top end and super high horsepower bikes, when you're lugging them around town, they are not happy. The gears are really long, the bike is just kind of lurching and begging for you to just get on the gas and go. Whereas this thing is actually pretty comfortable and happy doing the normal street stuff. Also, the electronically controlled suspension works amazing to dial itself in for bumpier road conditions. You can put it in kind of a standard comfort setting and it'll just kind of figure everything out for you. So the fact that this thing is so streetable really blows my mind. Also, it just looks really nice too. For me to really love a motorcycle, there also has to be look back factor. And my God, does the Ducati have look back factor. Every time I've pulled up to this thing somewhere, I swing a leg off of it, I always take a look back at it. I love seeing the Ducati logo right there, all the winglets, the red. I just really love the way this thing looks, and that's really important for me to really fall in love with the motorcycle, and it is why it is my number one pick of my favorite naked bike of all time. Um, I will talk about some of the competitors later in this video, and some of them are a little bit uglier and unfortunately aren't as naked, thinking about a certain Italian manufacturer. And that's the really cool thing about this bike too. You notice it is a proper naked motorcycle. The headlight moves with the forks over here. That is cool. I don't want a motorcycle that is kind of naked if I'm gonna get a naked motorcycle. And ultimately, I just love the way that this thing looks. It looks so cool. The fact that it's got this stumpy little tail, the kind of Alcantara seat material here, the big bronze exposed engine, everything about it is just top notch. And when I see it from a distance, I just think it looks incredible. But looks aren't everything. Let's talk over the competitors to this motorcycle. Okay, so there is an elephant in the room, or rather maybe three elephants in the room, and that's the fact that there are several other naked bikes that throughout the years I have said that I adored and were my top favorite ever. Now, I'm of the opinion that you can change and evolve and adapt as a human being and your opinion does not have to be fixed in time for the rest of your life, and that's what I have done. So let me talk about three competitors to this bike that used to be kind of my kind of top end favorite bikes. The first one obviously is the ZH2. I have sung praises about the Kawasaki ZH2. I adore the motorcycle. I think it's one of the silliest, goofiest, funnest street naked motorcycles you can buy. It's got a crazy supercharger flutter and whistle and all that good stuff. Really enjoyed that motorcycle. It's very special. There's not many supercharged naked bikes. In fact, there's just the one. But the Street Fighter is better in my opinion and I do like it more. Why is that? Well, it's the fact that it is just really good on track as well. The ZH2 doesn't have that component to it. I took it on track and I was scraping foot pegs everywhere on that bike, whereas this machine was much more confidence inspiring and much more interesting to ride on track. This machine is also much lighter than the ZH2. The ZH2 is a big, fat, heavy pig. And while that can be very fun, it does kind of succumb to the Hayabusa effect. And it's just this big, fat, beefy bike. And sometimes that is fun, but ultimately, for my tastes, I do prefer something a little more svelte, a little more fun, like the Street Fighter V4S over here. So I do think that this bike, with its exotic sound and the way it handles and how good it is, does edge out the ZH2 a little bit. Second on my list was the MV Agusta Dragster 800 RC. This was a really bonkers motorcycle. We had it as a loaner bike for a little bit and I really liked it, okay? So it features the same frame and engine from the 800 uh, Super Sport bike, the FC3 that uh, MV Agusta makes. And um, triple cylinder engine, 800 uh, cc's, about 150 horsepower, so really zooted up. It famously dethroned the Hayabusa in a straight line and we were able to race both the bikes. And I thought the bike was just amazing. Really nice to ride, had a lot of panache, really exotic, really bespoke, really had a lot going on with it. But ultimately, I think the Street Fighter V4S is a little bit more normal, if that makes sense, if you can consider it more normal. And I do think that it is just a little bit more reliable than the MV Agusta. I think I would have trouble buying an MV Agusta Dragster 800RC. 
and not wincing every time I take it out for a ride and being like, mm, is it gonna break? Ducati's reliability has increased tremendously over the years, and I think this bike just makes a better case for itself and also the value for money too. Third on the list is the natural competitor to the Street Fighter V4S. It is the Tuono 1100 V4 from Aprilia. Now, amazing, amazing soundtrack on the Tuono. I cannot deny that the Tuono does sound a little bit better than this bike, especially low down and on the idle. It sounds really, really nice. But the thing about the Tuono that gets me a little bit is number one, it feels a little bit fat and heavy. The RSV4 feels the same way. I don't know what exactly it is about those motorcycles, but they feel a little sluggish side to side compared to the Ducati. The other thing about them too is the way the throttle is mapped. The Aprilia is very aggressive. I could never really find a way to gel with the Aprilia Tuono 1100 V4. I could never find a way to just cruise with it on the city streets and just take it easy. It really had this feeling of trying to like rip itself apart and go, go, go. And that's why I really like the Street Fighter V4S is that it can be docile, it can be chill, it can be very easy to ride. And ultimately, at the stage that I'm at, I don't wanna go, go, go all the time. Sometimes if I want a naked bike, I want the experience of just kinda of easing into it and then flicking the wick if I wanna have some fun with it. That flexibility is pretty rare in motorcycling and I do think the Street Fighter V4S does edge out the Aprilia in my opinion. And I don't think my opinion is that dissimilar from Michael Neves of MCN. If I remember correctly, he did place the Street Fighter V4S very high on his list of naked bikes as well, because it's just a really, really, really good motorcycle. So with all that being said, let's wrap up my thoughts on why this is my new all-time favorite naked motorcycle, and I will stand by that opinion. So those are my reasons why the Ducati Street Fighter V4S is my favorite naked motorcycle of all time. It makes amazing power and amazing sound, revs out really high, it's super streetable, somehow still really good on track, and it looks incredible. I think this motorcycle is as close to a 10 out of 10 as I could possibly find for a naked bike, although nothing is perfect in life and it does have some weirdness. So I will give it a 9.7 out of 10. Nothing is perfect in life, remember that. And also remember that this is a giveaway bike. Don't miss your chance. Today is the very last day you have to get entered to win this thing. Head over to shop.yamenoob.co. Get yourself 10X entries for every dollar you spend. Again, this is the very last day to make your Ducati dreams a reality. Get this thing to show up at your doorstep. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. See you later. Oh, oh man. Oh, I gotta win this race. Oh, oh. Oh, I better keep watching Yami New. Oh man. Oh. Ah. Oh no. Ah. Oh, I can't see. I can't see. Ah.